Hello and welcome back to Soft Spoken Storytime, Episode 54, SCP-010, Callers of Control. Item Number SCP-010, Object Class, Safe, Special Containment Procedures. The objects comprising SCP-010 are to be kept in numbered locked boxes at Site-19. They are not to be worn except by test subjects. SCP-010 are only to be removed from storage for testing. Description SCP-010 consists of a series of six apparently identical cast iron collars with numbered metal tags and one remote control. The control is SCP-010-1. The colors are SCP-010-2 through 010-7. The colors contain intricate electronic components and are powered by small 5mm diameter 2mm thick 100V batteries. These batteries are rechargeable. The remote is a heavy black box resembling an old-style handheld radio transmitter slash receiver with a primitive blue slash white cathode ray screen and a series of more than 100 unlabeled buttons, as well as a frequency tuner. Through trial and error, the frequencies of all six currently found callers have been discovered. A label in Russian is stamped into the metal along with a logo consisting of workers building a pyramid. No official Russian corporation or government agency uses this logo or matches the words stamped into the metal. Placing the collar around the neck of a person and securing it allows one to control their every movement. With the remote, it is also capable of producing an adrenal response and activating or deactivating the sym sympathetic nervous system. The most abnormal feature of the collars is the effect they have on the body morphology. They allow the user of the remote to reconfigure the shape of the victim to an extent that is apparently only limited by the knowledge of the programming language of the remote. Addendum 010-1 History SCP-010 was discovered in the basement of a lone man in the Midwestern United States after a local disappearance was connected to him. When the police raided the man's house, they found SCP-010 as well as several dead bodies. One of the bodies was identified to be the man. The others were several other missing persons. Cause of death seemed to be mass suicide. However, there were signs of significant struggle first. Addendum 010-2 Disassemble experiment. Test 1. SCP-010-2 taken apart piecewise. The parts labeled and several photographs taken, then reassembled. Result. After reassembly, SCP-010-2 continues to function. Test 2. SCP-010-8 
constructed identically to SCP-010-2, but with the closest approximations available to the unreplicable components. Result. SCP-010-8 fails to function. Test 3. Unreplicable components from SCP-010-2 placed into proper locations on SCP-010-8. Result. SCP-010-2 ceases functioning with removal of components. SCP-010-8 begins functioning. Test 4. Components returned to SCP-010-2. Replicable components in SCP-010-2 replaced randomly with replicas. Result. SCP-010-2 begins functioning with return of components. Changing replicable components for replicas does not significantly reduce functionality. Replacement of a damaged transistor decreased time from transmission to effect of SCP-010-2 response to commands entered in the remote by 12%. Addendum 010-3 SCP-010 has been demonstrated to work more effectively in creating unskilled labor than for any other task. The logo is apt. Doctor Redacted SCP-011 Sentient Civil War Memorial Statue SCP-011 Item Number SCP-011 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures Item SCP-011 and the area surrounding it are to be cleaned once every day. For safety purposes, cleaning should start at least 30 minutes after sundown. Cleaning should always be performed by at least two personnel, who are also advised to note anything unusual about the item or the debris cleaned up. In a situation where the item cannot be cleaned for more than two days, Local residents must be contacted and instructed not to approach the item. Containment Procedures Nullified, 2004 Description SCP-011 is a Civil War Memorial statue located in Woodstock, Vermont. The statue is the image of a young male soldier holding a musket at his side and is carved out of granite quarried within the area. Occasionally, SCP-011 has been observed lifting its musket to the sky to fire at birds which attempt to land or defecate on it. Reports detail that its movements produce soft grinding sounds, but do not cause it any structural failure. Oddly, the gunfire is very similar to that of a standard firearm, despite observations that the item only loads granite bullets and granite powder into the musket which is also unharmed by the firing. In spite of its efforts, some fecal matter does manage to strike SCP-011, and it has reportedly become distressed when it has had a large amount of feces on it. 
on some rare occasions even firing at humans. Addendum Those assigned to maintain SCP-011 are to see document number 011-1 for instructions. Document number 011-1 Maintenance Brief Document archived 2004, accessible to personnel with security clearance 2 slash 011 or higher. Additional information. SCP-011's seeming sentience has increased since the first report of activity in 1995. As of 2004, the item's containment procedures have been dropped, but it remains under constant observation. Recording, recorded below are landmark events in its activity. Timeline 3-12-1995 Woodstock residents reports the statue's eyes moving. First sign of activity. 9-30-1995, statue shoots musket for the first time. 10-9-1995, statue begins shooting birds from the sky. 1-25-1996, registration as SCP-011, containment procedures begin. 4-14-1997, SCP-011 observed moving casually and looking around. 5-3-2000, after caretaker redacted, jokingly shouts, good shot, to SCP-011, the item replies, thank you, in a reportedly very human voice. First speech from statue. Ten twenty two two thousand one. SCP zero one one has conversation with caretaker redacted. Two thousand one. Shooting of birds stops. Two six two thousand two. At the imploring of redacted. SCP-011 steps down from its pedestal. 2003-2004 through 2004, SCP-011 reaches a human level of self-awareness. 11-10-2004 Containment procedures dropped. Custody of SCP-011 transferred to redacted. 5-17-2005 Redacted reports that SCP-011 is romantically attracted to her. 8-29-2006 Most recent psych test reports an IQ of 133. SCP-012 A Bad Composition Item number SCP-012, Object Class, Euclid, Special Containment Procedures. SCP-012 is to be kept in a darkened room at all times. If the object is exposed to light or seen by personnel using a light frequency other than infrared, remove personnel for mental health screening and immediate physical. Object is to be encased in an iron shielded box suspended from the ceiling with a minimum clearance of 2.5 meters, 8 feet, from the floor, walls, and any openings. Description. SCP-012 was retrieved by archaeologist K. M. Sandoval during the excavation of a northern 
Italian tomb destroyed in a recent storm. The object, a piece of handwritten musical score entitled On Mount Golgotha, part of a larger set of sheet music, appears to be incomplete. The red-slash-black ink, first thought to be some form of berry or natural dye ink, was later found to be human blood from multiple subjects. The first personnel to locate the sheet, Site 19, Special Salvage, had two members descend into insanity, attempting to use their own blood to finish the composition, ultimately resulting in massive blood loss and internal trauma. Following initial investigations, multiple test subjects were allowed access to the score. In every case, the subjects mutilated themselves in order to use their own blood to finish the piece, resulting in subsequent symptoms of psychosis and massive trauma. Those subjects who managed to finish a section of the piece immediately committed suicide, declaring the piece to be impossible to complete. Attempts to perform the music have resulted in a disagreeable cacophony, with each instrumental part having no correlation or harmony with the other instruments. SCP-013 Blue Lady Cigarettes SCP-013 Item Number SCP-013 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-013 are to be kept in a secure storage vault at Site-66. Exposed subjects are to be monitored for differences between their symptoms. Exposed subjects are to be interviewed daily and any changes in perception are to be logged. Description SCP-013 is the collective designation of 242 cigarettes which display similar anomalies. The most common external detail between instances is the presence of the words Blue Lady, handwritten on each cigarette, in blue ink. Subjects who consume the contents of SCP-013 through inhalation will begin to perceive themselves as a specific, unidentified woman. Subjects have described the woman to be aged between 25 and 35 years old, standing approximately 1.6 meters tall, with an estimated weight of between 50 and 55 kilograms. Additional recurring details include cropped dark hair, blue eyes, and bright blue lipstick. Immediately after consuming an instance of SCP-013, subjects will gradually begin to perceive reflections of themselves as having the features of the woman and will gradually perceive their bodies changing to reflect her appearance over the course of the following weeks. All changes are entirely mental. The subject's body does not change outwardly, only their perception of themselves. These alterations are permanent and cannot be reversed. SCP-013 
was discovered after the suicide of an Ian Miles, packed in a large cardboard crate in his apartment. A cursory search of the apartment uncovered several hundred sketches of a figure strongly resembling the one perceived while under 013's effect. Miles' body had been found sitting at a desk, dead of a massive overdose, and draped over a handwritten note, transcribed below. During the investigation of Miles' apartment, one civilian investigator became affected by 013's effect. An embedded agent soon contacted the nearest site. The subject the artifact and related evidence were extracted and contained. Currently, 217 instances of SCP-013 cigarettes are contained at Biosite 66. 25 SCP-013 cigarettes are contained at Research Sector 09 pending future research into similar anomalous effects. Addendum. Below is the note which was acquired along with SCP-013. I see her everywhere, that sad blue lady. I feel like I used to know, know her, but I can't remember. I love her, but I don't know why. She's so beautiful and sweet and clear, but I don't know anymore. Her favorite flavor. Where did you go? I miss you. SCP-014 The Concrete Man Item number SCP-014, Object Class, Safe. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-014 is to be kept in sight, redacted, in a chair with arms, preferably facing a window. Music should be supplied on a regular basis, preferably constantly. This music should not include pieces originating after 1937. A security camera should be present in SCP-014's room. Description SCP-014 is a Caucasian male, appearing to be approximately 30 years of age, with black hair brown eyes, and a somewhat round face. Records indicate his name to be Robert Chetford, confined in 1915 to the Norwich Asylum in Connecticut for delusional insanity, claiming that he had been cursed to live forever and was slowly turning into concrete in consequence. The asylum closed in 1937, and the patients were transferred to various other facilities. SCP-014 came to the Foundation attention in 19 redacted, from rumors of a patient who seemed to be entirely immobile and showed no signs of aging. Further investigation determined that acquisition was warranted. SCP-014 is to all outward appearances a normal man, but he does not appear to age and shows no signs of possessing a metabolism. He does not eat, drink, perspire, or in any other way demonstrate life functions. He breathes only to speak, 
and apart from his eyes and vocal apparatus, is to all appearances utterly immobile. He has never shown any evidence of pressure, ulcers, despite his position not having varied for several decades. Neither do his muscles appear atrophied. He can converse normally, but shows little knowledge of or interest in events since his confinement. Addendum Note Frankly, were I to interview this man without knowing his history, I'd think he was a perfectly sane and well-adjusted individual who happens to be quadriplegic. As it is, I have to conclude that he's the ultimate proof of the idea that the mind rules the body. He thinks he's concrete and will live forever, and so he's as close to both as he can be, somehow. Dr. Redacted.